Hey everyone, today we're going to be looking at diagnosing a faulty cup sensor as well as learning how to remove the cup sensor and replace it with a new one. So the way to figure out you're having a cup sensor issue on your bottoms of system uh, would look a little bit something like this. We are in um, auto start or in pour mode, our sensor is on, we use the medium cup setting and we have two red lights here around the start stop button. And that's pretty normal for patients. So we go to set a cup on, and nothing's happening. Try it again. Still nothing. So we know something is up. Uh, so what we're going to do is go down to Prime, or on the new boards, they say Purge Mode. we got four lights here. And what we're looking for, the, the cup sensor is sort of self-explanatory. It's letting the component know that there is a cup on the dispenser, and we should be getting liquid to pour through. So in prime mode, so we're just gonna push down on this slider magnet on our cup coupler. And we're seeing that there's still just four red lights here. So we'll just spin this magnet a little bit. Okay, so we know that it's not, so something is going on. It, it could be the magnet with this, or it could be the cup sensor. So I'm rotating the slider piece here on the cup coupler, it's a magnet. And sometimes it helps just to rotate it and push down, we should be getting four green lights in this area. Let me do this for you, show you what you're looking for. On, prime. So we should be getting something like this, but instead, get here. So this is letting me know. See, I'm rotating this slider magnet on here. We're still getting reading, so it's not a slider magnet issue. Which it could also be slider magnet issue or the cup issue, but I'm saying this is going to be a cup sensor issue more than anything. And a good reason to check for that, uh, I'm mentioning it, so you can take off this cup coupler. Put on a different one, and that'll let you know that if it's the cup sensor magnet or something is up with that. It's still, because we know that this cup coupler works on this line just fine not get anything there. So it's got to be a faulty cup sensor. So let's talk a little bit about what the cup sensor is. So this is our sort of our valve assembly here. This is what is on the underside of your dispenser. Um, we like to call this the valve assembly. This is our blue block. Uh, this is a solenoid, brass block, plunger head assembly. So this guy right here is our cup sensor. And you'll see that there are two notches at the end of it here. And there's two little ports on our brass block. And so this is what fits on the underside there. That's where the cup sensor seats. And then at the top of the dispenser is this case nut. And that case nut, you see it's threaded, and there's some very fine threads on the inside of the brass block there. Give you a little better view. So that case nut sits over our flow guide right here. It pops in and screws in, and that's what is keeping all those components together. So what we're gonna be doing is removing the case nut, and then on the underside of the dispenser, we'll be popping off the faulty cup sensor. And so you just got plug in there, and we'll be putting a new one in and screwing everything back on. So since we're going to be taking apart the valve, it's important that we try to remove as much liquid and pressure out of the line as possible. So um, if you are running from a short draw system, which means you have a home kegerator or a micromatic keg cooler in which the dispenser is directly mounted into, the easiest thing to do will be just to untap the keg. If you're working with a long draw system, meaning you're running from a separate keg room uh, up to the bar, it'd be a little different process in which you will uh, untap the keg and you're going to want to uh, bleed all the pressure out of the line from the empty keg detector and then go back into the cooler and turn off the pressure once liquid has come through. Now an added twist on all that is that our cup sensor isn't working so we can't just go in you know prime mode press start see how nothing's happening there. So what you're going to have to do to merge that pressure and that liquid is just this is our plunger head here on top of the case net. We're just going to Press down like that, with your finger. bleed off as much liquid and 
the pressure as we can because once we open up this valve, uh, this liquid will just start spraying everywhere and it makes a giant mess. There we go. So all the liquid is out. And it's important to know if you've got a long draw system, there will still be pressure running into your beer pump. And so you might hear a clicking going on out there. So if you get to go back into your keg room, so you can see there's still pressure trying to bubble it through. So you just go back into your keg room and you just shut off the gas uh, to your beer pump, which will be the um, to the left of your wall mounted panel on the uh, two product regulator. Um, it'll be the gas valve on the right for your uh, beer pump gauge you'll be t turning off. Okay, so liquid is out of line. So we got this from our empty keg detector lights flashing. We've got the long draw system. If you're running a short draw or a kegerator system, uh, you won't have these guys lining up, but you'll know that there's nothing in the line because you just bled it out and you've got a short run to your kegs. So we are ready now. We also know that there's the pressure is out of there. Let me just a little bit left. Okay, looking good. So there's a couple tools that we are going to need for this. First thing we're gonna need is a uh, crescent wrench and you're gonna need one that gets up to one and a quarter there. We're gonna be using this to unscrew our case nut. We're going to need uh, a towel, uh, preferably a little microfiber towel because the grooves on the case nut are very thin and they're also very sharp and they'll cut up your fingers pretty quick. And then you're going to need your uh, replacement cuff sensor, looking like this with blue tape. And then finally, one of the most important pieces is I like to take a uh, one and a quarter uh, socket. So this will fit over the case nut and this will help when you are screwing it back in. Uh, it can be a little tr tr tricky because you're going to be pressing up against the valve assembly up to the dispenser uh, pan and pressing down on this and turning to get the case nut secured in the brass block. So we got those parts in mind. Um, let's get the old cup sensor unplugged first and then we will run through the case nut. Okay, so looking at the underside of the dispenser, uh, this is our line that we were having the issue with. Our cup sensor is the cables with this blue tape wrapped around it. On the circuit board, there's also a blue dot noted there. And all you're gonna do is just take a screwdriver, push in on the connector, and then it'll pop right out. You also see that there's insulation around here. Uh, it's kind of sticky, but if you just wanna pull down on it, that'll kind of clear up some space and make it a little easier to, to work with. Back up top and take our wrench. Seat it on there. And then just turn it counterclockwise. And it'll loosen up. microfiber towel at one of those points. It's loose. You can also reach underneath, kind of push up on that valve. Nice and loose, it popped up, and then so it'll come out just kind of like that, and pops right out. So the, the inside of this case nut is it's got these fl this flow guide around it, so it's kind of connected in there. So you might just have to pull a little bit on the case nut to get that to pop out. So now that our case nut is out, what we're going to be doing is pushing down on the front of the valve assembly so it'll sort of tilt. 
and the back of the brass block here has this groove so there's actually a copper pipe that each valve is uh, attached to it's running along the underside the back of the pan here that's helped keep it in place so we're going to be pushing on this to kind of tilt it forward and our, our cup sensor will be on here like this and then we're going to uh, pull down on the plunger head assembly so this is going to be kind of an easy pop off underneath and I'll uh, switch to a view below to show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are underneath. That was cup sensor is unplugged, so we're just gonna be tilting down like this. So let's see if I can zoom in here. So the valve is tilted down, and sometimes you might get just lucky where the cup sensor just pop right off, but it looks like so there's our flow guides there. Pushing down on the plunger head from the top there. Let's see if that does. Nope. Let's turn it just a little bit more. cup sensor. We use just a little piece of tape to keep it in place. Uh, so sometimes that can stick. You could get just a little bit of insulation sticking to it there, but that's how you get it removed. Okay, so I removed a couple wires. Uh, there are LED cables that were there just so you get a clear view of how we're angled down here. See, so I can easily reach down from the top and move that plunger head down. So now we want to put our new cup sensor back on. And the system for doing that will be just as we removed it. So we're going to be making sure we get our two little nubs here placed on top of the brass block. And I like to reach on the underside of the valve assembly where you've got your um, linkage pieces here. So there's a little linkage piece that goes crosswise here and that'll push the plunger head down. So I'm reaching underneath, so see how that's happening. That makes it a little easier. There we go, it's popped on. Kind of feel it get seated right there. So once you're seated, and you're just gonna push back up. Make sure that valve doesn't move. And make sure you got nothing else in place there. Okay, so our new cup sensor has been placed. It's now ready to put the case nut back on and get this thing fired up. So, let's zoom in just a little bit here. See these flow guides here? I'm still in the valve a little bit. So you want them kind of sticking out. So the process for this is you're going to be pushing on the underside. Zoom out a little. You'll be pushing on the underside of the valve so that it's nice and up against the pan. And start on the back. And just catch one of the lips of that flow guide. get two of them on there that way the third one pops right in so now this is where you're going to need your socket you're going to be pushing from the underside of the dispenser and you're going to get that socket right on there this threads are really fine but you should feel it just snug right in nice and tight. And you don't want to tighten it too much. Once you've got it snug on that, just give it about a quarter turn or so with the wrench. So 
what we're looking for when we're putting this back on is that uh, once we get pressure back on and some liquid to make sure there's no leaks around here and no leaks, uh, no leaks uh, on the underside as well. And of course, just a reminder before we get started, it's always important to plug in the new sensor. And again, that's on the, if you're facing the left side, it's got blue tape here and there's a blue dot on the circuit board to help remind you. Um, on the far right is our flow sensor. It's got the red tape there, so just don't get the two confused. Back up top here, we've got our um, kegs tapped. Uh, I'm running a, a long draw system here, so I've got my empty keg detector full of liquid again, so we're, so we're all good to roll there. So let's just put our cup coupler on. Make sure that this cup sensor works first before maybe spilling liquid everywhere. Prime mode, and hey, look at that, four green lights. A good deal. So that's how we know 100% that the cup sensor was the issue. So now, uh, at this point, you're good to prime. Still in prime mode. It's our stop button until liquid comes through. Always a little air bubble in there. Good to roll. So let's just go back and auto start. Medium. And we're up and running. So that is how you diagnose a cup sensor issue. And that's how you successfully swap out the faulty sensor with a new one and be back up and running.